so lovely to see your faces. It's been about a month and a half, so we're very excited uh, for today's showcase to celebrate um, the culmination of our three-month-long course, Empowering Student Voice in Education. We're excited to sh um, hear from you and really learn from you through this process on the ways you've been um, taking on innovative projects and innovative pathways to encourage student voice uh, in your classrooms, in your schools, in your districts, and in some cases within your provinces. Um, part of today is also an opportunity to be able to learn from one another. So we really encourage, as Jennifer said earlier, really encourage um, questions, reflections, ideas on each other's presentations. So each presentation we hear, we will have um, follow up any quest, uh, Q and A. So if you have a question or an idea, please feel free to type it into the chat box. Um, or if you'd like to take the microphone and share um, through live audio, that would be great as well. So to get started before our presentation, we just wanted to say a few hellos. Uh, we have some very special guests here today joining us from across Canada, um, as well as briefly share some of the highlights of our course. So a special hello to representatives from all of the partner organizations. We have from the Waterloo Global Science Initiative, Julie Wright and Haley Rutherford. From the Canadian School Boards Association, we have Valerie McLeod and Darren McKee. From the Canadian Education Association, we have Ron Kenyell and Max Cook. And from C21, we have Robert Martellacci. So hello to all of you. We look forward to your participation and we thank you for being partners of this exciting national initiative. I also wanted to acknowledge the different school boards that are participating in this initiative. We had 50 teachers from six different school boards. Many of the superintendents are also joining us here to hear uh, about these projects. We had Sunwest School Division in Rosetown, Saskatchewan, Seven Oaks School District in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Evergreen School District in Gimli, Manitoba, uh, Peterborough Catholic District School Board in Peterborough, Ontario, Simcoe County District School Board in Simcoe County, Ontario, and Waterloo Region District School Board in Waterloo, Ontario. So hello and welcome to all. Hi. Hi. Our learning journey of our Empowering Student Voice in Education course took part over an orientation and some of you had me uh, show up live and others had some online orientation sessions uh, and then there were four different modules so for those who are not aware of the modules each module uh, was focused on the four themes so exploring voice module two was on transforming learning partnerships the third one was on overcoming challenges. The fourth module uh, really is about empowering student voice and growing momentum. And this is the national showcase culminating event where all the 50 different participants, there were, uh, in some cases, one project per person, in other cases, clusters where teachers work together in different classrooms to, to develop group projects. And we're show, showing a handful of the projects today. Okay, so just briefly wanted to run down a few logistics um, before we hear from our presentation. Um, so during the presentations, be sure to keep your microphone muted uh, so that we don't have any interference. Uh, and during the presentations, please feel free um, to share your ideas, thoughts, your questions into the chat box in the bottom right-hand side of your WebEx screen. So you'll see the chat box there. There's been some chat happening already this morning, uh, so please feel free to use it as your space to share. Uh, if you do have a, a question or a comment that you'd like to share after the presenter has spoken, you can also raise your hand, uh, which is located at the bottom right hand of your screen, and it'll alert us to hand over the microphone to you. Similarly, you can type it into the chat box that you'd like to take the microphone, and we'll um, hand over the audio. And finally, for presenters. So presenters, for those who are using slides, um, we have all of your slides loaded and ready to go. Be sure to tell us when to click next slide uh, so that we can um, help you move, uh, move your slides through your presentation. Uh, so without further ado, we're really excited to get started with our presentation. I should say, oh. <laughs> uh, Sarah, Sarah and I, so my name is Jennifer Corriero, Executive Director of Taking Global, and Sarah Sun. We've been our uh, the course facilitator. So for those of you who are who are new uh, and watching online in uh, either the live or recorded yeah. session, I'm Jennifer. I'm so. Sarah. <laughs> nice to meet you. I think we also we know all of the participants, so we just come on and speak. So yes, good good on you for introducing us, Jennifer. Um, so our first presentation is uh, from Canastan School and Sunwest School Division um, about their Earth Day celebration. 
So I am going to ask uh, Megan, Ms. Megan Hominick if she would like to take the microphone uh, to be able to share her presentation and just let us know next slide when, um, when you're ready to go. Can you, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yeah, good. Okay. okay. Um, so we at Kennison School, um, I had my grade 9 and grade 11 students set up a presentation for Earth Day. And it all got started because we were approached by uh, the co-op, the local co-op in the town. They wanted to put on a lunch for Earth Day. So we decided to take it a little bit further and make it a school-wide celebration. And um, basically, I put the presentation in the grade, I guess it was a grade 9 science class and a grade 11 environmental science class. And I put the presentation in their hands and kind of let them run with it. Um, we started by just talking about what issues they thought students of their age and students of Kennison School should be aware of when they think about Earth Day. And they came up with some really good ideas. The first one was recycling at the school. Um, a school-wide initiative had started this year to recycle juice boxes, but they noticed that not much else was being recycled. Um, there was lots of things they were finding in the garbages that could be recycled. So part of their presentation was just talking to students about, you know, what else could be recycled and what should throw in. Oh, thanks. So that picture there is um, of the students presenting. Um, right in that picture, they're just doing a little bit of history about Earth Day. They thought, the students felt it was important to um, kind of discuss with the younger kids what Earth Day was about, why it got started, who started it. So it was really good. Uh, you could go to the next uh, slide if you like. So something else that they decided, they decided to talk about was air quality. They thought that air quality is a big issue. Um, we've been talking about deforestation and mining and stuff quite a bit in the classroom, so they thought that was something really good to address. So they made a little presentation about air quality, and they came up with an activity that went along with the air quality as well. Um, so the grade nine students thought that it would be really fun to have um, all the students in the school plant a sunflower seed just so that you know, raise awareness of green spaces and, you know, keeping trees and things like that. So that was a really great activity. Um, this is a third activity. Oh, and the third activity, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, oh, they were talking about recycling here. So what can they recycle? And the students did a really good job of giving kids examples, you know, rinse out your yogurt containers, your granola bar wrappers, things like that that they came up with a list of things that they found in the garbage on a regular basis that didn't need to be in the garbage. Um, and the third kind of thing that they did is they created a pledge tree. You can just keep it here. Um, they created a pledge tree and they, they had all the students um, come up with a pledge of something they would do to try to be more environmentally conscious on a daily basis. And I thought it was a really cool idea, but they actually decided to use all recycled paper to, come, to create their tree and have the students write on it. So that was kind of cool. And that's just a picture of the school-wide event there. Um, but yeah, I thought it went really well. I kind of let the students run with it. Um, they did a really good job. I had very little input into what they were talking about. Um, the school was buzzing. We used about a 50 minute period to do these activities and there was definitely a buzz in the school for the rest of the day, the days after. Um, they also decided that with the lunch, they wanted to do a garbage free lunch. So some of the students actually contacted the women who were putting on the lunch to let them know and kind of discuss what we could do for lunch that would create absolutely no garbage that day. So that worked out really, really well. Um, if you want to just keep clicking through here. So just some, some photos of people planting their seeds. We gave them little seed cups and they wrote um, just something that they loved about the environment on their little seed cups, which was really cool. Uh, keep going. Um, something that I thought was really, really kind of neat about the whole day was some of our students to be able to care a ton about activities I just got that, though. Um, they all participated, they're all happy, they're all smiling, they're all helping the younger students in the environment. Great. Um, next slide. 
So again, just the, the whole activity of them planting. Uh, it was really exciting. A lot of the students kept their seeds at school on the windowsill, so they were excited. Um, you go to the next slide. Uh, we're hearing um, we're hearing an echo. Yeah. I think someone else has their mic on. Like you can be able to do it. Okay, I think it's coming. Oh, I think we're okay now. I think we're okay now. Um, if you just want to go to the last slide. One more. One more. So this was the plant tree, and you can see that they had used the recycled newspaper and talked about all that when they did it. And we had some really, really interesting pledges on the tree, and we left that tree up for a while. And um, I don't know, I thought it was a really great day. The, the grade nines were really nervous about presenting in front of the whole school, and it definitely was a confidence builder for them. Um, they really enjoyed it. They came out super happy, super um, kind of excited about getting to present in front of the whole school and talk about the issues that they thought were of importance. So they actually want to do another one. Um, but I'm not sure what issue they'd like to discuss, but we're kind of hoping to do that before the end of the year. I thought it went really well. All right, thank you so much for that presentation. And I see that there's a question from uh, Darren McKee uh, asking, are they combining the recycling with a move towards going paperless as well? And the other question I have is, if you can share the curriculum connection, so what subject areas were uh, you linking all of this work to in the classroom? Sure. Um, I mean, our school, the, the senior end, um, we're fairly paperless already because we are a one-to-one -one school, so all of our students have iPads. And personally, myself, um, I don't give a ton of paper out in my classroom, um, but that was something that they talked about in their presentation for sure was, you know, recycling and the fact that they use recycled paper and we didn't print anything out. So that was definitely a connection. Um, the curricular connections here were uh, with the grade 11 students, because it was environmental science, the whole thing connected. So it connected to air quality, it connected to waste management, um, and it just connected to like deforestation. Pretty much it covered the entire course actually. And with the grade 9 students, it connected to the um, electricity unit and like the energy, the use of energy in Saskatchewan, because we did talk about mining and where our energy comes from and the fact that some of our air quality problems are related to that. So that's how we connected. It actually worked out perfectly with where we were in the course. Uh, we do have also a question from Max, but Max, your question I think was sent to me privately instead of the group. Um, but Max is wondering what messages from students work best to get other students motivated to participate? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it honestly wasn't very tough to get the whole school motivated. Um, they, we actually, I think the, the hook of the whole thing was a video, um, and I can't think of the video name right now, but it's narrated by Morgan Freeman. It's about a three minute long video, and it just talks about how um, the earth doesn't need us, we need the earth. So if we don't keep the earth healthy, like humans can't have food, we can't have water, things like that. So I think that was kind of the motivating hook. They started their presentation with that. And if anyone's interested in the video, I could definitely um, put the link on the the website, but that was that was the hook for sure. It's a really kind of powerful and um, inspiring inspiring video about caring more about about the earth. Awesome! Thank you so much. Um, oh, there is one more question. Okay, let me. Okay. Um, so here we'll have Jen ask. All right, so we have uh, Haley Rutherford who's asking the question, great to hear that your students are keen to host an event like this next year. Do they have any other plans, ongoing campaigns, or clubs to follow up? So have they started to talk about follow up? Yeah, they really want to follow up. They want to start doing um, 
at least once or twice a week doing garbage free lunches where they we so we have color teams at our school so we we have this school split into three teams we have a yellow a purple and a green team and they want to do kind of a school-wide competition um, where you know the team that creates the least amount of garbage at lunch you know wins a point and at the end of the year the winning team always kind of gets a prize um, or like a pizza day or something like that so they want to kind of um, mold that into an ongoing kind of competition with the school already and, and do garbage free lunch days like once a week. Um, there's still, we might do it the last two weeks of school this year, but we'd really like to continue it into next year. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that project and I know sparking ideas and others as well to hopefully uh, take on a similar initiative uh, within their schools and districts. So thank you so much. Uh, so our next presentation is Multi-level student voice. So this is a collaborative presentation between um, five teachers at Evergreen School Division. So I'm going to hand it over to them uh, to introduce themselves and to share the work that they've been doing across grade levels. Oh, I should be in that. Hi, uh, Scott from Evergreen. So we decided to combine our efforts into one um, presentation. And uh, in Evergreen School Division, we try to conceive of student voice that's happening at many levels and many layers, and so we thought we'd try to summarize really quickly uh, what some of that looks like. Um, I think you can advance the slide. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit uh, around a divisional perspective of student voice. We've had student voice entrenched in the school division for a number of years, uh, largely uh, with thanks to our superintendent, Paul Cuthbert, and a really supportive board of trustees around student voice, along with uh, teachers who are really willing to learn and try new things and uh, awesome students, of course. So I'm going to speak a little bit about that. Megan and Chris are going to talk about student voice conversations that happen in middle years classrooms. And then uh, Don Bugneris is a high school teacher. He's going to talk about uh, student voice from an individual student perspective through a project that uh, his class undertook. And uh, Rachel Urbanski is a high school teacher in Arburg, and she's going to speak about student voice, art, and community. So you can advance the slide, please. So um, one of the first things we wanted to talk about with Student Voice were some of the reasons why it's really important and where we think we must uh, hear Student Voice. So there are some traditional answers that students give us around why Student Voice is important. Those are usually about, you know, so we have ownership over what we're doing and then we'll do better and we'll focus more and it's more relevant to us and so on. There's also a big picture around learning um, the art and habit of democratic participation. So our mission statement in Evergreen is about contributing citizenship and we really want to make sure kids have lots of practice being contributing citizens. And then sometimes student voice is relegated to clubs or uh, specific uh, structures and, and those are good and helpful, but we also want to make sure that student voice becomes embedded into classroom teaching and learning. So we hope that our presentation um, in there or and not communicating that value. So if you could put this slide. So at a division level, we are in the habit of having divisional student fora. So um, this year we hosted another one. Every few years we do this and gather high school students mostly together to share their ideas about their learning and learning environments. Um, some of that work led to the development in our school division a number of years ago around a divisional student council. So that's representative mostly of high school students across the division and they have input and influence through a board representative. So our board of trustees has a, a student rep uh, on it. And um, the influence of that divisional group has made changes to our uh, teacher hiring guides, our policies and practices and procedures. There are teaching and learning conversations that happen in each of our high schools. And uh, then division-wide students have opportunity to uh, participate in surveys, focus groups, and also do presentations. Uh, like a recent one that we had at our Division PD Day. So that's kind of a divisional focus that's been in place for some time and has been enhanced to some degree this year. Uh, but it's mostly been around high school students, so uh, Megan and Krista endeavored to take some of this conversation into the middle years at their school. So I'll turn it over to them for that, and you can advance the slide. So Megan and I decided to try to extend what was being done at the high school at the divisional level into our grade six, seven classroom. So we started with a discussion about what is student voice and why is it important. This was a very important conversation because we found the students didn't really have an understanding of what student voice even was. 
and why it was important. So that followed with a discussion about what contributes to being a meaningful contributing citizen. Um, we also spent some time talking about the purpose of learning, why learning was important, and conditions that support learning. That led into, actually you can skip to the next slide, please. That led into talking about what great teaching looks like, what it looks like and what it does not look like. Um, students really got involved in this and I found it very informative to see what they really valued in the classroom. Next, after that, Megan and I decided to further begin further incorporating student voice into our classroom meetings that we were holding. So our class meetings, what we did is we took our classroom and we rearranged the desk so we were in a big ginormous circle. And what we did is we took turns going around and each student focused the first time around on positive things that are happening in their school or what they're seeing that is a positive, something positive with their classroom climate. Uh, the second time around, what we were looking for was things that they maybe had concerns about or issues or things that they wanted brought to our attention. And the third time that we went around, we looked at solutions or ways that we could enhance or implement those suggestions into our classroom. Uh, we held our classroom meetings. We started out once a cycle. And then Krista and I kind of based our classroom meetings on the climate of the classroom. If we noticed that there were some issues or things going on, we might have increased the frequency of our classroom meetings. Or if we noticed that the climate was kind of calm and cool, we might have maybe had a little bit more time between classroom meetings. So next, we'll turn it over to Dawn, who's going to talk about it from an individual student process or perspective. All right. Thanks. Thank you. We'll go to the next slide, please. And so I'm a high school teacher, and we put, I put everything to work that we've been doing in student voice. Uh, a project was assigned in geography, and the parameters of student voice was incorporated into the project. Students had input into what they hope to get out of the project. And so without me explaining the parameters, it all dealt with what we talked about in student voice. So next slide, please. And when it was all done, Right, the work certainly was more detailed. It was deeper overall. I was really impressed by the overall project depth of the students. So I did a, one student in particular, I did the case study on, and I asked him, what did you like about this project? Because he put a lot of effort into it. And so the answers he gave me were, next slide, please. And what, things that really stood out, he liked to be able to pick his own topic. So he picked something he was interested in, so that was really, really good, really like that. And choosing the format of the project, it was open-ended. As long as they worked with me to you know, finalize an acceptable format, any format was acceptable, just that I wanted it to be done in enough uh, detail. And so he liked that. Um, and on his reflection, he reflected that what he learned was important to him. It just wasn't important to me to meet the curricular requirements. It was important to him. So with in the meeting the curriculum requirements, but also topics important to him, and he said, you know, that he will, it's very valuable what he learned. He also liked that a, a voice in grading his work. He had input, because when you look at a project, you don't always know exactly what work went into it from the finished product, some of the levels to get it there, so he really liked that. And also the fact that he was able to present the project to a peer and not to the whole class, and so by doing that, he even said he, he just felt more comfortable, he, the anxiety was gone, but he also put more effort into it. He just didn't want to get his project presentation over. He really put a lot of heart into it, a lot of detail, a lot of effort, because he felt really, really comfortable. So he got a lot more out of his presentation because of the, of the voice that he had. All right, thank you. We'll turn it over next to Rachel. So next slide, please. Okay, so I'm gonna look at a classroom perspective of student voice, and I teach a grade nine, um, 9 to 12 art course where all the students uh, multi-grade all together in one room and uh, they already have a quite a bit of choice over their art pieces that they do and the materials that they use but with this student voice project my intention was to challenge students to use art to bring attention to social justice issues that are important to them so to start we did some activities with the taking it global art card pack that uh, we were given. Thank you for that, it was very helpful. And then we investigated some art activists such as Keith Herring and Banksy and Shepard Ferry. Next, students, 
um, planned their projects and um, they created pieces about many issues. If you go to the next slide, please. So some of the issues that they addressed were um, are on the slide there, and I have four students here who have agreed to share their pieces with you and tell you a little bit about them. So I'm going to turn it over to yes. Yeah, this is actually just image up on the slide right now. Uh, hello, I'm, <laughs> I'm Jed, and uh, so this is the artwork I did for our art with voice piece, the real picture right here. And it's, what it's about is uh, self-worth, and it's for social media and self-esteem, and the message I'm sending with this art piece is about that, because there are people in the developed world uh, who usually complain about stuff like not getting enough likes on Facebook or Instagram or something like that, and they post it on Instagram or Facebook. and. Uh, I honestly think that these people are kind of annoying because, well, there's a lot more important things in the world than what they post on Instagram. Like, there's kids in third world countries who don't get access to the technology or our different types of social media because they're either poor or they live in a war zone or something or they don't even have friends, stuff like that. And... This piece was originally created by Banksy. I just found it off of Google Images. And I decided to do that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. about this project is that we could do anything we wanted with any medium and any social problem or issue. I was just wondering, uh, I, I was just curious if, about the medium. Watercolor and ink, yeah. Um, I'm Josh. Uh, this is my piece. Uh, it's called Proud to be Pinoy. Um, make this. Philippine flag colors, uh, three stars and a sun symbol, which were in the Philippine flag. It's supposed to show like Filipino kids to be proud of their culture and heritage. Um, I like this assignment because we can choose anything we want. Uh, after I have a voice. This project. Yeah. Okay, so I'm Brittany, and um, my piece was done on body image. Um, it's not done yet, but. Um, the Barbie represents what young girls of our generation view as perfect. 
and the little girl represents self-esteem and how she views herself. Um, I like this project because it gave students a chance to express feelings towards a social justice issue of their choice. Okay, and in conclusion, overall, what I liked as a teacher of this art class was that students were able to share um, what matters to them in a really safe way through their artwork. Their voice came through their pieces, and they got to learn a lot about what is um, meaningful and what some students are going through or thinking about at the time, what's important to them. And I think it's improved our relationship in the class, and everybody is just uh, we've got a good, respectful, and encouraging vibe going on in our room. So. Okay. Well, there's a question for you. Is there a plan to showcase the artwork? Oh, um, actually, we have a, our, an art show next um, week, and so we're working on putting that together right now. And uh, yeah, it's going to be excellent. Thank you so much for, for sharing. Uh, and to the courage of all of the students who came forth, um, the issues that you have identified through your artistic expressions all kind of struck me in the heart. They're all very important issues um, and, and feeling that sense of pride for culture, talking about issues of self-worth and how sort of technology and, and likes online impact our sense of self-worth and identity and, um, and also this, this image of a Barbie doll, um, concepts of freedom, uh, very, very powerful subjects. And I would invite all of you to, uh, in addition to showcasing them at, uh, at your school, which is incredible, and I hope that everyone in the community can see them, we invite you to submit them to our online global gallery and uh, we'll follow up with the link with your teachers on TIGWeb.org. And um, thank you so much for, for sharing all the layers of how you work together um, at Evergreen School Division. Uh, there was one question that came earlier from, uh, from Darren, and it was a question about the uh, approach um, are there principles or a set of guidelines as to the roles and responsibilities of a classroom that is a model of engagement for students and teachers? So I'm not sure if any one of you um, at Evergreen wants to comment on that particular question. Um, I know that the uh, the blueprint, the Learning 2030 blueprint that we incorporated as, as part of our course was, was one of those refer reference points where we also talked about a, a charter of learners' rights as, as one thing that we referenced. But is there anything else you wanted to comment on there? I'm just going to use the mic because my typing's too slow, but um, Evergreen's journey with student voice began a number of years ago around the CEA uh, project, or at least that was part of it, the CEA project around Imagine a School, so some people might recall that. So um, that was one of the things that we undertook to try to enhance the idea of student voice in the school division. And then our reference point really is our mission statement. And uh, the province of Manitoba also actually has a mission statement that references the development of citizens. And so it, uh, I, I guess it seems maybe obvious that it has to be a priority at every level, um, from the student level right, right through the superintendent, that um, student voice is a priority so that kids get that practice and learn how to contribute as citizens uh, so that our democracy is always renewed. Thank you so much, and just again, a huge round of applause to our presenters from Evergreen, and especially for the students who shared with us so bravely and courageously some of the issues that are important to you in your community, and I know for a lot of the people watching as well from across um, our provinces that can directly relate to and speak to some of your experiences, so thank you so much for sharing that with us, um, and we hope others can learn from what you've been doing, so thanks again. Uh, so our next presenter is actually a video. <laughs> so we're going to be sharing a video from Davison School in Sunwest School Division. Now it's a grade five class who had taken on the lofty goal of the Blue Dot campaign as part of the David Suzuki Foundation. Uh, so they've created a two minute um, uh, video with that covers their slides and what they did with the project um, and it's really exciting because the momentum they've created um, in bringing awareness to how do we create our healthy environment um, has 
brought a lot of attention um, around the district. So I'm not going to say any more as I don't want to ruin the surprise, but uh, I'm very excited to share this video. So I'm going to play it on my end. Um, so you just want to make sure that your audio is up, is on, and so you can hear it. And uh, I will start it uh, right now. We all have to clean air, clean water, healthy food, and a healthy environment, don't we? What? So that was our presentation from Davidson School, uh, their grade five class. So congratulations both on creating a video to bring awareness to the amazing work that you're doing and for being the first community in Saskatchewan to join the campaign. So congratulations and we hope that this um, encourages all of our participants today to also take on this challenge as part of the Blue Dot project. Um, and very excited to see where it can go. So congrats again. Now, if there are any specific questions um, for Mr. Paul Stinson and his students, um, Arlene Lowe has listed his email address. So it's just paulstinson at sunwestd.ca. So you're more than welcome to send any questions or comments or even kudos um, on the work that they're doing uh, with the Blue Dot Project. So thanks again. We're, we're so excited to see this. And congrats on being the first place in Saskatchewan, and we're going to have to take up this challenge now in Ontario. So our next presentation is from Kindersley School in, here we go, Kindersley Composite School in Saskatchewan. So I'm going to ask if Ms. Uh, Ms. Michelle, uh, Robin Michelle LaRue would like to take the mic to share a little bit about the project they've been doing, uh, Social Integration of Skills. Uh, so whenever you're ready, I'll hand over the mic to you. So can everyone hear me? Is this working? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So my name is Robin Michelle LaRue and um, I'm the student support teacher at Kindersley Composite School. Um, so this project uh, was kind of like a collaboration between um, myself and another colleague at Elizabeth School um, and it's conveniently located like a block away. <laughs> um, so what is it? Uh, we realized that our students had a need, and that need was to be able to advocate for themselves effectively and to um, interact positively um, with different community members. So some of the kids that I work with who have needs um, sometimes have a hard time um, interacting and communicating uh, in a way that relays uh, what they're thinking and what they're feeling. 
So what is it? Um, we loosely base this program off of the Circles program. Um, and we interface with parents and community members and um, consultants and our administration um, in order to figure out like the logistics of it. Um, but what we did is we went to different uh, places in the community and had our students interact in authentic, real ways um, in order to be able to learn um, and show their, their voice, I guess, in our community. Um, so it was really cool because it was kind of like exposure for our kids um, in interacting with these different uh, with these different places in our community. Um, so that was really neat to see, and it was kind of cool because um, my school partnered with uh, the elementary school. Um, so my students acted as mentors, and so then it really brought out um, a really cool aspect that. Uh, kids with needs don't often get that chance to be mentors. Um, and then the younger kids were able to see um, kids with needs acting as mentors. So it was like a really, it was like a really nice um, pairing from both of our schools. Uh, so I explained how we planned it um, and I explained why we collaborated it. Um, some of the challenges, um, we we had some challenges at first having everyone in our community kind of um, be on board, but uh, like the more we went out into our community, um, the more positive it was and uh, the more people actually started, this was the exciting part, the more people like started offering our kids with needs jobs. So that was huge and that was like an unexpected bonus. Um, so some of the interaction and feedback from the students um, was that they chose some of the places that they wanted to um, that they wanted to go to, um, and we had them discuss like um, some of the areas that they needed to develop and they needed to work on. So then they directed that, which is really cool. Um, I'm going to show really quick. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see it. I'm going to show really quick sort of like the assessment checklist that we did with them. Um, and it was just like expected behaviors and how they did or did not comply to those expected behaviors. And then um, and then how they thought they could effectively um, improve those behaviors. So that was cool. Hopefully, I blanked out the name just because kids with needs already have enough challenges. I don't think it would be fair to put their names out there. Anyway, so this is really cool. Hopefully, you guys can see it. Nope. Okay, anyway, so the top part, it just says assessment checklist, behavior to be improved, strategies to improve behaviors, um, and then, so we went back to the same place multiple times in order for them to be able to have the experience um, to improve those behaviors, which is really cool. Um, and then um, just having observing checklists from myself and other adults who uh, accompanied our kids on this on this thing. Um, this is a template for, um, oh. this is a template that we used for, I blanked out the name again, um, just like the circles. Um, so just if I can extend this really quick. Um, so there are different, uh, there are different circles. So there's the red circle, which is stranger. Um, then we have yellow, which is acquaintance, um, or orange, which is, um, uh, like someone who you would wave to, but you don't necessarily interact with. Um, the handshake circle or the yellow circle. Um, then you have like people who you're closer to, which is a far away hug circle. And then the blue circle, which is someone who you're close to. And then your purple circle is your private circle. So then we kind of went through all of these with our younger kids and our older kids. And our older kids were more the mentors, but they just kind of decided and understood that um, they have the choice and the right to decide who they want to have in their lives and how they will relegate different people to different circles. Um, so that it's kind of giving kids with needs like their voice and that empowerment to make their own decisions and so that they don't feel like they have to decide to choose to have people in their life who they don't necessarily want to choose. So that's like an important safety piece too. Um, sorry, I know I'm getting close to the end. <laughs> um, so, 
Oh yeah, curricular connections. This is the last thing that I'm going to mention. So it was kind of challenging um, to have the curricular connections um, because this is like really life skill stuff. So interestingly, that was one curriculum that we were able to tie this into. Um, so life skills 18, um, we did some ELA 18, um, PA 38A, um, and I believe that was all. So. It was a stretch, and it wasn't like an entire program fit into all of those curriculums, but we were able to tie it into those different curriculums for the various kids that were in our program. So that was really awesome. Okay, I'll turn this over to any questions, um, and I'll turn off my mic. Awesome. That was really great, Robin. Thank you so much. Um, there were a few questions in the chat box. So what I'll ask is maybe do you want to respond um, in the chat box? There was a couple of questions about what you did as well as some of the resource links to some of the curricular resources that you showed um, that may be of um, great use to other educators um, to replicate some of the work you're doing. So feel free to respond there and then we'll continue on with our next presentation. But thank you so much and we were so delighted to hear that yeah, out of this um, experience, students were even offered jobs and meetings meaningful ways to continue um, their social integration of the skills that they're learning. Um, it's phenomenal. So thank you so much. <laughs> so a little round of applause. Uh, so we're going to move on to our next presentation and continue to feel free to chat in the chat box. Um, we have our youth consultation group and our student voice from SunWest School Division as well. So this is Roxanne, Camille, and Vanessa. Uh, so I will ask if you can take the microphone and I'm just going to um, take it over to your slide. Now, um, if you just want to let me know when to move to the next slide, um, Roxanne, Camille, and Vanessa, uh, and if, uh, there, if you are showing um, one of the videos, just let me know as I have them queued uh, to be shown. So I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Um, you can just actually go through them, uh, Sarah. It's, it's a 38-page um, presentation, actually, that uh, our, our students did. So uh, if you just want to go through it, um, people can take a look at um, the information that we're about to speak to. Um, the youth consultation group in SunWest was created uh, about eight years ago because trustees wanted to know more about how students felt about their education. Uh, student voice has long been incorporated into many aspects in SunWest, including student voice on our Division Level 2 Education Sector Strategic Plan, school year calendar decisions and presentations to trustees, administration, school community councils, and as well at special national at provincial events. So the students in SunWest are not new to sharing their voice whatsoever. Uh, this year, a group of 20 students uh, representing grades 7 to 12 uh, schools in 12 of our, our uh, 17 high schools uh, met four times this year to discuss topics that our Board of Education um, wanted to see some information surrounding their education. And this year it grew into something larger and more in depth as our group felt that bringing mental health awareness to students was important. Um, you'll see the slide there, they had the board members also take some, some notes which led into an assessment piece. Um, they wanted to learn more about rubrics and assessment and so this group had a large undertaking in that they designed a online survey that they sent to their peers. They gathered over 750 open-ended responses from students in grades 7 to 12 across the division. Um, they also created four short videos surrounding the issues that uh, face teens today and that affects their well-being. This group then took that uh, presentation and those videos on mental health to the student leadership conference that was held. It's a two-day student-organized, student-run, uh, facilitated leadership conference. It was held in Marengo. And so they presented that and gathered more information even from over 100 of their peers. Um, they just recently presented this PowerPoint um, to the Board of Education and uh, some of the results were really, really interesting. Um, Vanessa, do you have anything else you want to add in regards to that? <laughs> no, that's good, Roxanne. I'll maybe speak once you're done and just a few reflections, but this, uh, I'll let you continue at this point. Okay. So um, one of the things they asked or wanted to know from their peers um, was in the way that students learned. And so they asked, um, the open-ended question was, was, it would help my learning if teachers, it would help support my learning 
if teachers would. And so um, we actually have a summary uh, video of the summary of responses that the students um, gathered and so they recorded it where our plans are to probably show this to teachers across the division um, just so that they know they also the students also created a survey as well um, with more teacher focused questions um, that hopefully we'll be able to send out soon it's along the same lines of the same questions that they asked their their peers however just uh, formatted in a way uh, to ask those teachers. So, uh, Sarah, if you could just play that I wish my teacher would help support my learning video, that would be great. So that was part of our part of the 20 students that were on our youth consultation uh, group this year, and so they shared their presentation and their information that on these slides that you're seeing with the Board of Education, and also from that presentation uh, to the board, they uh, had some issues come up surrounding uh, distance learning, and uh, being that we constantly give students a voice in uh, terms of planning, um, we're building a new distance learning center, and so the suggestion was put forth uh, for these students to actually sit on a committee um, and give input into what they want to see in our, uh, in our brand new building, so that's kind of neat. Um, we interviewed three students, also from our youth consultation group, and uh, we would like to share uh, another video of them uh, speaking about their experiences with uh, student voice and the youth consultation group, um, just because you don't really want to hear from us anyways, you want to hear from students. So, uh, Sarah, I'll get you to play that last video if you wouldn't mind. Roxanne, we um, we want to show the video at the end only to make sure that we don't miss out on the other on the other projects. Um, oh. if it's okay because uh, some some people have a hard stop at um, at noon, so we're we're happy to continue this on a, a little bit after twelve um, and show that video at that time. And um, also, there there are a few questions that people were asking about the reaction. So if, if you don't mind responding to some of those questions in the chat, and then we'll come back after the other presentations to, to show the video. 
um, so far. If you want to maybe click through the, mm -hmm. the slides so that we, we can introduce, um, and I think it's also uh, in SunWest School yeah. Division. Um, and and that, that video was incredibly powerful and the method of, of engagement was also powerful to get their, their voices on video. So uh, we're curious to, to hear how um, the response has been to, to some of those questions. And, um, and now we want to give an opportunity to hear from the Rosetown Central High School project, um, how will our in-depth be better? Uh, for this one, um, Janet, did you want me to just put the Prezi up and let it play? Or yes, it's, it's quite, the Prezi is quite self-explanatory, so okay. please. Okay, I'll do that. Hi, and welcome to the Independent Education Program of the Rosetown Central High School in SunWest School Division. Every year, I work to have a creative program that engages students who do not engage very easily. With this Student Voice Project, I wanted to engage the students in the creative process and not just the results of my creativity. The biggest impact the Student Voice Project had on our classroom was seeing students start to feel their education is something they shape and control rather than just something they endure to graduate. Sure, we can do that. Our magical words, not often heard by these kids in school. We're a small group, so relationships are incredibly important. However, we often have to learn how to do this well. It is always my privilege as a teacher to be invited into the woods of these young people with their history of distrusting professional folk like myself.
part of this journey was watching my students receive well-deserved praise for their presentations and then seeing their school self-images blossom in all different directions. Will this project continue next year? Yes, absolutely. We are not done, and there will be new students to include with their new ideas. When all the students graduate from grade 12, they will not be done needing to learn and grow. By giving them voice, creativity, and power right now, they will have the learning skills for their futures. Hi, and welcome to the independent... Okay. That was it. Did everybody go home? Yeah, I think it's on. All I did was mute. I can hear you. I just can't see anybody else on. Hello? Oh, okay. There we go. Um, so thank you so much to um, Janet Kofi Olson and to Rosetown Central. Um, if there are any questions for Rosetown, please feel free to type them into the chat box. Uh, sorry, we got muted for just a moment there <laughs> as we were maneuvering back and forth. Um, so Ms. Kofi Olson, do let me know if it's possible I can maybe share the Prezi link with some of our participants as well um, to be able to watch and reflect on some of the amazing work that's been happening in your class. And we just want to honor our last couple of videos. So what I will do is show the video from West Kildeden Collegiate, um, which is the SWAT team raising awareness on the impact of tobacco and smoking. Um, and then I'll also share the final video from uh, SunWest, from Roxanne, Camille, and Vanessa. Uh, so feel free to watch them um, as we conclude our student voice uh, showcase.
Okay, so we're just going to pause the video for there because there are um, participants that do have to leave. So what we're going to do is share the YouTube link uh, for the remainder of this video, um, as well as the subsequent videos um, that unfortunately we're not able to show due to uh, we're running over time and we do want to honor everyone's um, time commitment to the presentation. So what we'll do is we'll end here with some closing remarks and then uh, so I, I will I will highlight a couple things. So we'll, we'll formally close and thank everyone. And for those who are able to stay, we'll play the very last video um, uh, for those who are able to watch it. And as Sara said, mm -hmm. we'll we'll share the links. Um, there are also project uh, pages. So we've posted the link in the chat. So it's tigurl.org forward slash SV projects. Uh, so you're welcome to browse those project pages. And for those of you who've showcased projects today, if your um, artifacts, you know, your videos, your presentations are not yet uploaded on your project page, we invite you to do so so that people can find it uh, there. And uh, just once again, we want to thank you for your participation. We're working on our uh, evaluation. There was a pre and post survey. And just to say that 93% of participants um, say that they intend to transfer and apply the newly gained skills um, immediately following the course. So we really thank you for your active participation. We thank all of the superintendents that have been involved. Uh, we thank the students who shared their voice throughout these projects. And we know that today was really only catching a glimpse of what's out there. And we hope that we can help amplify uh, your work and your projects uh, through our Taking a Global Platform, uh, because many of the issues that you're working on are, are issues being faced in many communities across Canada and around the world. And, and so we commend you uh, for your efforts, and especially for those of you who've taken it you know, really beyond the walls of your classroom. Uh, and thanks again to all of our, our national partners uh, who were there on, on with us on this session today and, and throughout this journey over, over the past year. Uh, so with that, we applaud you. We applaud you all. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and we will we will show the final video for people for people to watch. But if you need to tune out, um, please, please feel free. Uh, once again, we look forward to what the future holds. And thank you for your participation. Awesome. Thank you so much. So I'll let this finish uh, playing so you can hear more about the SWAT team and what they did and learned about through their experience. And then I'll play the final video. Um, from SunWest, and we will conclude there. So again, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know all of you and just getting a glimpse of the amazing work that you were doing before and you're continuing to do and looking forward to see what's in store for next year. So thank you. Um, and on that note, we will finish with our student voices.
Um, before I was a part of these consult, I kind of just thought it would just be like a group of some random students that signed up and we're just going to come, we're just going to talk about some of the smaller issues that maybe people didn't like, like not really huge deals that weren't going to make a huge impact in schools and stuff. That's kind of what I thought coming in. Um, uh, thought about during the youth consult group. I had originally thought it was going to be a lot of public speaking, which I was relieved to know that it wasn't that much public speaking, um, as well as lots of getting lots of opportunities to get to share my voice and opinion, which it was. Being involved in youth consultation has showed me what other schools are like in kind of comparing my learning environment in school to other schools, and also I have learned other students' opinions on maybe some things that I thought weren't really a huge deal because they weren't a big deal in my school, but in other schools it made some serious impact and stuff, and it's just really given me different perspectives as to what to see and think every day in school. I definitely think at the conference getting to share my personal story to people really just opened my eyes as to how, after, um, in my opinion, I felt like I was very alone, but after sharing it and learning that there's lots of people that go through similar things, um, that was like very um, personal and exciting for me. Um, I also think just the fact that I get to share a room with lots of people who have similar ideas and goals as I do, and getting to share um, our opinions I've learned that everyone has different stories and that you don't know everybody and that you can't assume that you know somebody. Assessment-wise, I would like to see um, a change in the environment of the school, being able to have opportunities for those higher-ended classes and people that need the extra support having classes of their own without discriminating the people that aren't at the same academic standards. So that would be my main one, as well as just being able to um, see overall people be more involved in the school by getting to have um, their school be more enjoyable for them. I really hope that the board can like take all of what we talked about and what we would like to see in our classrooms and what we would like our teachers to do as students I really hope the board can take that and show the teachers that or that the teachers can take from that and be able to apply it in their own classroom so that the, the students, not just our own what we want, but what the students also want from the surveys and stuff, that they, that everything improves in the classroom so that it improves the learning, it improves the attendance, like just wanting to be at school, it just improves the overall environment. And also with the mental health stuff, just raising awareness of that and making sure that teachers understand that and other students understand that the, the issues that students deal with right now, they may have all done it before, but like they don't always remember how hard, much harder it was for the first time when you're a teenager and you're dealing with all this stuff at once. So yeah, I just really hope that teachers can take from that and really improve their teaching and improve students' learning. I hope that schools become a more positive learning environment and there's more alternative learning options. Student voice is really important because teachers can ask students their opinion and stuff, but they're probably not going to get the complete honest opinion of them because the students don't want to offend the teachers at that point. But in this case, the students talk to students, and it's a really open thing so we get to give our feedback on what we want in our classroom so that the teachers can take from that and apply that and know that this is what students actually want and then apply that and improve their teaching and improve the learning of their students, and that's just overall. It's the school environment and their learning. Because then the teachers know what the students want and what they're thinking and like what matters to them. Well, as adults, you guys know a lot of very important things, but you guys aren't living in as a teenager in our day now. So uh, we have our own opinions that might be different from when you were in school. So having our opinions shared on what today's problems and good things and everything is um, 
it would be different than maybe what you guys see it as. So having all of those combined, I think it would make a really great place to be. What, what a great video. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing uh, the different perspectives and hearing the different perspectives from students, and it's a really strong point where um, adults and people often in positions of authority and decision-making um, have lived experience and uh, aren't necessarily understanding what it's like to, to be a teenager today, and that's one of the many reasons why student voice is important and, and uh, the point articulated were, were very powerful, and even the whiteboard one on what issues affect us, I know that wasn't the one we were supposed to show, but I, I thought the, the imagery was powerful. So once again, thank you for so many of you hanging around 24 minutes past our intended uh, end time. We really appreciate your attention today, and um, we thank our, our partners uh, and our participants, and we hope that we can really grow this momentum forward. Uh, so please send me along any feedback or suggestions you may have on how we might develop this in the future. And congratulations. So long, farewell. Enjoy your summer.